we wanted the kids to be involved in the planting and to also gain an understanding of why this project was important and what they were contributing to. So to try and foster that connection between the kids and the waterway and make them understand that their actions have really important outcomes for their local environment. The school contacted us and they wanted to have an experience for their students where they could learn about science in the real world and get some hands-on real world experience. They brought plants with them from school, um, we'd arranged that before they arrived. They came down and we gave them an introduction talking about the site, why it's important, uh, what species are found there meaning the growling grass frog, uh, and that the fact that the growling grass frog is an endangered species and needs increased habitat, um, and that its habitat has declined because of urbanisation. And then we um, went into an activity where we did um, the habitat survey. So what I really wanted the kids to get out of it was to have a look at the habitat and identify what was there and what wasn't. And this was going to act as a baseline for down the track when we see the, um, the planting um, come up and um, thrive that it might that might look a bit different. They need a couple of things including vegetation in the water so they need open water but they also need vegetation like these rushes and reeds here so that they can um, uh, have cover from predators and to to breed and to feed they need um, vegetation that's floating on the top of the water uh, to attach their eggs to but they don't just need habitat in the water, they need to be able to come up onto land. But they don't necessarily want open, cleared, mowed grass. They need prominent positions in the wetland to, to call from, to seek mates. So they need a whole lot of different types of, not just vegetation, but spaces between the vegetation. But they don't want the deep shade that you get when you've got um, closely planted trees and bushes around the water. So that's why at our, our planting project, we were only planting grasses and uh, tussock type plants, um, rushes and sedges and grasses, but not planting them too close together. And we didn't plant any trees. And they were, the kids were really engaged when they had a break. There was lots of kids that couldn't be torn away. At the end, when the teachers were rounding them up to try and get them back on the bus, there were still kids saying, miss just one more, miss just one more. Um, trying to get the last plants in the ground. We, we present the, the students with a lot of information, but you know they'll retain some of it, and that's why I'm, I'm keen to go through the planting method, for example, with them, just to give them certain messages, you know, because I think most of them wouldn't have planted at all before. The kids also monitored macroinvertebrates out of the out of the creek. So macroinvertebrates are important for the health of the waterway ecosystem and they're also a food source for many frog species. So we looked at the macroinvertebrates as an indicator to the health and gave the kids an understanding of the food chain, the role they play in the food chain and uh, how we can um, support that through the planting as well. You know, there's a, a bit of a sad message in it that ground grass frogs are endangered, but I think this is a really positive message that this activity is something that is accessible to schools and community groups, and there is something that we can do about it to increase habitat. And it's that visual thing of putting a plant in the ground, you can see the impact that you've had. We all know that plants, you know, we're told that plants equals nature, so when we, when we go out and we plant, you can see there was, there was 200 extra plants in that part of the world um, after the kids had been involved there. So they could, see, they could physically see the impact that they've had on that piece of environment.